Hi guys, this is Ellery here. So we're, we're going to continue on and I'll show you some more tips and tricks on Premise. So the last video showed you how to install Premise and how to make this little shortcut to sys.exe, which is also known as Premise Builder. And the last video also showed you how to go ahead and start the Premise server, also known as prkernel.exe on your computer. So we'll go ahead and click the shortcut there. So if you've started the premise service successfully, you'll see local computer. Now if this doesn't show up, one or two things, the service isn't started, and if the service is started, you're not running the sys.exe as administrator. It's kind of a Windows 8 thing. you got to go into compatibility for sys.exe and tell it to run as administrator, which you should have all that set up if you watched the last video. So since this is the first time we're running this, we get a little nice wizard that pops up. So anything in here you can change later. I'll show you real quick where all that is. So here we'll simple security, just give it a username and password. Something you can remember, obviously. And so we'll just tell it we want an apartment. So these are just templates to save you a little time from having to right click and add add things one at a time. So what I typically do is pick one of them and then I'll copy and paste out of it and then I'll delete it when I'm done. So go ahead and click next. We'll just keep everything. Although, yeah, we don't really need the door lock or entry camera. So you, you know, uncheck that and maybe we don't have a carport either. So I'll go ahead and uncheck that. Now these are what's called premise add-ins. So these are things that are compiled using the premise SDK. So you can't modify the code but for any of these guys unless you have the source code and go ahead and modify the source code and recompile it using Visual Studio. But there's still some handy stuff. So notice I checked the X10 devices. This is just to get show you guys later on an example. Uh, you know how lights work so that's why we're going to include that Lantronics even if you don't have any Lantronics device servers you want to go ahead and check that box because what these allow you to do is have kind of like a virtual TCP port that will show up as a serial port within premise so there's a bunch of modules that rely on just virtual Lantronics device servers in order to be able to work so this last one here global cache so they make a lot of great network based products so what they allow you to do is have infrared work over the network you know IR to control IR devices like a TV and and they can also receive IR so if you had a remote and a little IR receiver you can get one of their products and actually get the signals back into your premise server over your, your existing Ethernet infrastructure in your home. So we'll go ahead and include those. They also do serial port servers, again, Ethernet based. And they also have a, a lot of Wi Fi stuff too. So if there's some remote location where you got Wi Fi and you want to control an infrared device like a television, you can just drop in one of those guys. So go ahead and click next. Oh, yeah, we'll click computer audio just to play around, just in case we play around with it later in another video. Okay, so next automation browser. So that's an ActiveX based control. So you need Internet Explorer to use it. But it's a very nice two way interface for talking to your premise server and controlling it using a Internet Explorer browser, so we'll go ahead and include that. Occupancy is one I like to use for my house, and that includes various like occupancy timeouts for what it, you know all the rooms in your home actually. So whenever motion is detected, it'll start an occupancy timer, and if motion is detected again within that period, it'll restart the timer. So that way you can have a reliable way to detect occupancy and and when the room's actually not occupied it can turn off your TV lights etc 
And we'll go ahead and include location info. So we're going to click finish. And notice it said processing down here. And there's the home objects. All right. So since I don't like having to click apartment and then my room, I'm just going to go ahead and move all these guys under the home and just delete the apartment level. All right. And so for add-ins, this is how you would, you click that little book icon up there and you can change that. Modules are those pre-included modules in premise, so you could change that. And so you notice under the living area, there's this, this thing called a media zone. So what that is, is just basically, it's a zone where you would put all the AV devices in that room. So any room with an AV device is going to have to have a media zone. And that's also how the Kodi module will actually work. So it relies on you having these media zones also. So we'll just create one under master bedroom real quick. So you go under, right, so what I did there, sorry about that, I right clicked, new, audio, video, media zone. So say we just have like a television. Put one of those in there and then we also, say we have a PVR, which is what you'll actually bind the, the Kodi device type to later on. So we'll go ahead and leave that there for later. And again, all this is taking place under home. So if you get lost and you don't see home up there, you just can left click on home over there. And you can also turn off the views if you, if you want to. You can move the panes around. It's just like any other Windows based program. So we'll go ahead and stop this video, and in the next video, I'll go over devices and modules. All right, thanks, guys.